All right, so I'm just gonna shoot this video on my iPhone really quick. Um, just a quick video of the difference between the Series 2 Elite Controller and the Series 1 Elite Controller. I just bought this one today, and I've had this one for, gee, I don't know, since I've had this since they came out. The first one I got was with the uh, Elite Bundle, with the Elite Xbox One console, and then I've been through four, and this is now my fifth Series 1 controller. So the first three, were from Microsoft and they all broke within 90 days, which is pretty crappy. Um, the fourth one was from Best Buy and the A button quit working on it. It was stuck to where the A button was not pressed and the A button was registering as being pressed on the controller so it was just smashing A. And this is now the fifth one. I've had it for about a couple months now. And so far, the fifth one is going strong, which is pretty crappy that I've had to go through five of these guys to find one that seems to be holding up. So, here's a Series 2, here's a Series 1, and here's what I think about them. Right off the bat, uh, they both have similar cases. However, this case is just a slightly different texture. Um, it's more rigid, I'd say. This case is a softer texture, and they, they both are called a hard shell is what I think they are they're called by Microsoft however this one I'd classify as a soft shell because I can kind of smash that down pretty good I mean you can hear the buttons clicking this one you can still smash it down but with the same level of pressure it's a little bit more firm of a case so this one I would feel okay dropping this on the ground and not breaking the controller but with how easy these things break uh, which is crappy to say that but it's true um, if I drop this upside down on the ground like that, this could easily push in and just break a, a joystick. And it just takes the slightest bump to break the joystick on these. Um, this probably could have probably broke the joystick right now, honestly. Just being dead honest with you guys. So the other difference between the cases are this one has the silver zipper and this one has the blacked out Series 2 color scheme zipper. And they both have this little loop for like attaching... Uh, maybe your headset too with the carabiner or like whatever other kind of accessories you want to keep clipped together in your backpack. This one on the Series 2, however, has this nice little rubber port, which is where you plug in the pass-through USB charging cable to the controller case. So if I want to pop that open, I can take the included USB-C cable and plug that in really quick. And when I plug that in, the case actually vibrates. Not the case itself, but the controller gives you a little rumble. So that lets you know that you plugged it in and everything's charging. If you open it up, you'll notice that it's blinking white. So you'll see that blinking. That lets you know that it's charging. And I'm assuming once it's done charging, it'll stay white or either turn off. I haven't charged it fully yet. As Like I said, I just got it. But that's just to let you know it's charging. So I do really like that feature. If you plug this in without opening it, you'll feel the case vibrate with the controller inside. That lets you know that this actually got plugged in correctly and it made contact because sometimes this just doesn't line up with the dock inside. And here's why. So if you pop this guy open, this dock is removable. So you can either charge this controller directly from the port like that, or you can charge the controller by having this guy sitting out on your desk, which is a magnetic case. You can leave this sitting out on your desk and you can place the controller on top and also charge the controller this way, which is nice. This is actually magnetic, so it'll stick to the controller if you pick it up. I'm not sure why you'd want to hold it like that. But I guess if you really wanted a game like that, you could, but you can also just easily unplug it and plug it directly into the controller, which is really nice because you can game like this and your controller never dies. So, or you can have it in the case like that and do it with the pass-through. So, why it's kind of difficult to plug in if you plug this in you'll notice that you can see it coming through right there that's the charging so say you have this in there a little crooked or whatever it might take a little while to line up and plug that in so if you get this nestled down into this little rubber grommet right here then you should be able to easily plug in and line up every time which is really cool i really like that and i really like the fact that they could have left this hole back here but they closed it with this little flap that way, just say this got rained on or you're walking through the parking lot and it's raining or whatever, you spill a couple, say I spilled this water bottle down and it's by the case, it's not gonna get in the water in this hole. 
By no means is this case waterproof or anything, but it's just nice that they thought to cover up the hole just for whatever reason. It's just a nice, nice thing they did there. So here's the Series 2 with the built-in charging dock. And we're going to open up the Series 1, and here's where you'll start to notice the differences between the two controllers. The zipper's getting a little sticky on this one. Uh, we'll see how well this case holds up. Um, first thing I noticed was this case uh, is pretty flimsy, like I said. Here's another comparison of that. It's pretty, you can literally fold that in half. This case is a little bit harder. So I'm giving about the same amount of pressure here. And this case just doesn't, it doesn't crumble as much. I mean, look at that. This is like cardboard, basically. It's pathetic. It's not really, it's better than nothing, but it's not, this is a much stiffer case, if you ask me. So other differences in the cases, um, we'll get into that here. Just putting this back on really quick. Excuse me. All right, so we'll get into the cases a little bit more. This case you'll notice has a more shiny texture to it. It's a little bit stiffer. Um, I like this better because the old case you'll see has some wear marks from the joysticks in here. This is just the foam pad. This isn't a charging dock. This is just a foam piece that they put in there when you buy the Series 1 controller. But the Series 1 case gets these little wear marks here. And you'll notice it picks up a little bit of lint. The texture of this case is kind of like microfiber suede feeling. So it does pick up some lint and everything. And it kind of gets trapped in this fabric. The Series 1 is a different texture. Um, here that's kind of harder. Whereas this one's more smooth. I don't know if that helps you determine with the sound. But so this is a... This case seems like it's a little bit harder shell of a case. Um, like I said, they both have the interchangeable parts here, and we'll get into that now. So with the Series 1, you get a colored piece here, and it's this is like a darker color. So this matches the overall theme of the controller. You've got that silver look with the chrome Xbox button and the green uh, sync button and you have the green paddle locks or trigger locks here excuse me and you have the green paddle buttons there on the series 2 everything is blacked out this is a different texture this is this plastic piece here is now one with the top of the controller on this so this texture here is the same texture as the series 1 controller which you can see gets kind of fingerprinty and looks like kind of, I guess it's grease or whatever, not grease, whatever, it's just smudgy. Um, and then this one is overall the same texture here. However, this controller has uh, grips that go all the way around. So you get these grips on the back here on this controller, whereas on the Series 2, the grips now wrap around. They go up the sides where they don't here, they stop, and then they wrap around the whole controller. Uh, they don't come up here though. But the difference between the grips, these grips feel more grippy, I'd say. They almost feel sticky. Uh, I like these grips, but they almost felt like if you got something on your hands, they felt kind of weird. I actually ended up wiping these down a fair amount because they just felt sticky. And if they get sweaty or anything, I don't really like these grips. They kind of feel weird. Uh, this grip texture is a little bit stiffer and not as rubbery feeling. I kind of like this better. Um, so... That's the difference between the controller casing or like the body. Um, I really like this feel here. This is a great smooth texture, but I do like that the grips come up and I like that this is now this, this texture here and I like that, the blacked out look. So the buttons on this is more of a gray kind of gunmetal. It's more like a more of a blacked out look. All the triggers and everything are this dark color and these have textures here where these do not have textures. You can see the difference in the color there. Um, so the buttons are the same, actually. Exact same buttons on there. Blacked out buttons. And uh, what else is different? Let's see. Um, so to control the button presets, you have a slider here, which it's nice. Uh, just a slider. You only get two options, two, uh, one and two. On the Series 2 controller, you get a button here. We'll turn it on. So you get... If everything's turned off, it's default, which means no paddles are working and just it's just a regular controller set up like that. Then you can switch to setting one, two, or three. 
So you have three presets and then you have one default mode, which I like that they have default because sometimes if I just want to play a random game, like a Game Pass game or something I just downloaded, I got to go put a default setting on this controller and this isn't going to cut it because this is setting one and setting two and they're both mapped to different buttons. So I got to go back into the Xbox app and set up a default profile to play the game. But say I downloaded some random Game Pass game and I just want to try it out and I want a default setting. I just push that and then you get a default mode and A is A and B is B and everything's exactly how it is. Instead of having this set up where like B is right trigger or whatever you want to map it to, it's just nice to have that default mode there. Uh, one other difference I did notice with the joysticks is this is like a blacked out plastic look. Um, you can feel kind of plasticky. On this controller, that is actually some kind of metal piece here. So it feels more solid. This joystick feels more solid on the Series 1. However, I've been through three of these because the joystick got uh, stick drift. And I'm just doing this as a kind of a test right now. I don't game this rough on a controller, but some people out there do game pretty hard on their controllers. I mean, I've literally learned to baby this thing because I've been through four of them and this is the fifth one I've been through. So uh, I do like how that's kind of metal, but it didn't really make a durability difference because when you first op open this and unbox it, you're gonna think, oh, look, metal thumbsticks, they're great, but this broke just as easy as anything else did, if not easier. So that didn't really, it's not really, you can't really say that that's more durable because it's metal. So getting into the other, I don't know if I can turn that off or not. It's gonna just keep blinking. That's the other thing. You can't take the battery out of this. So this one, I could take the battery out and turn it off. This one's just gonna blink. There it goes, it turned off, okay. So that's the difference between the color schemes and everything like that. Now we're gonna get into the back of the controller and the paddles and the thumbsticks. So we're gonna start out with the Series 1. Um, on the Series 1, you get two shorty, regular Xbox One themed sticks. Uh, there's the shorties and you get two of them. Then you also get two of these medium domes. So that's a medium level, you can see the difference, and it's domed, it's, it's flat, there's no texture on it. It's kind of like the PS2 or PS3 or PS4 controller with the dome stick. I'm not a PlayStation user, but I do know they have dome sticks. So whatever that is comparable to for you. Um, it's nice, I do actually really like playing with the dome stick. My thumb rolls around on there nice and this one kind of has to stay in the divot, but I like how that can roll around under my thumb. You get two of these, and here's what it looks like with them on there. If you have the Series 1, you already know, but if you don't, here's the difference between the two. The ma major difference is the grip, the profile setting, and the thumbsticks. Um, there's the two medium length sticks. Then you also get uh, two of these tall sticks for the Series 1 controller. That is pretty massive. I mean, that looks like a small trash can on my controller right there. So that's the medium height and that's the tall. If I take this off and go back to the shorty, here's the difference between the shortest stick you can get on the Xbox Elite Series 1 controller and the tallest stick. That's a pretty massive difference. I do, I mean, I don't play with the tall sticks often, but I do use it sometimes, depending on what games I'm playing. It kind of makes my thumb sit up at an angle. You can kind of see like it's kind of up there. Whereas the small stick, my thumb's kind of slanted down like that. I find for my hand size, the medium is right, keep my thumbs just level right on it. It's just comfortable. It feels comfortable for me. I've got pretty big hands. So again, there's the smallest one, there's the largest one. And then you've also got your uh, D pad that can change out. So here's the D pad. This is also green under here, just a cool little touch. Um, you've got the D-pad which switches out and you get two options. So let's go over to the Elite Series 2 version. You still get two D-pads, they're just a different color. And yes, these are interchangeable. You can switch D-pads if you have the D-pads from the old Elite controller, you can switch those. This is however black. Um, so that's switchable. I kind of like the black with the silver actually. I think that actually does look pretty good. If you just happen to have both of these controllers, uh, those switch, so that's good. I think that's that color and that goes in there. Just don't wanna get the pieces mixed up. So there they go. However, on the Series 2, the joysticks are different. You don't get the same joysticks. You get the same D-pads selection, but here's what's different about the joysticks. 
you still get the same short, regular Xbox One style sticks. Then you get the old school 360 sticks, which I think is pretty cool. Um, there's the 360 style sticks. I really like these sticks. They're a lot wider. They're going to take some getting used to because I've been playing with the skinny ones, which is the Xbox One. Here's the difference. Whoops, I'll grab that in a second. Okay, here you go. This is the Elite regular stick, and this is the Xbox 360 looking stick. You can see how much wider that is. It's a lot much larger stick. However, they're the same height. So on the Series 2, these are both short. Got two shorty sticks right there. And then, so you get the shorties, and then you get a shorty dome stick with the texture on it. See, that's got the texture. I'm, it's not that noticeable, but it is a nice little texture. You can subtly feel that. So you get a shorty dome. On the Series 1, if you remember, you get the medium dome stick. So that's no longer in the Series 2. The Series 2, the only difference in height you get is if you go to the tall guy. So you get another tall guy. Um, that's just the same, it's the same exact stick as the Series 1. However, you only get one of them. So instead of getting, you get two medium domes here and two tall sticks and two regular sticks. On the Series 2, you only get one of the tall ones and one of the dome ones, which I think is kind of weird. I mean, if you wanted to have matching sticks, you kind of can't unless you go, the only one that you get two of is the 360 looking stick. So you might be thinking, well, if you've got both Elite controllers, why don't you just take the other tall stick and throw it on there and see what happens. Well, here's what happens. If you try to switch the sticks up, this is the Series 2 stick here, and this is the Series 1 stick. You'll notice it doesn't fit. I keep dropping it off because it doesn't stick. See? It, doesn't, it just doesn't fit. And here's why. On the Series 1 controller, when you pop this off, there's nothing under here. It's just an open piece, and it's a little bit differently shaped internally. There's nothing in there. If you take the Series 2 and take a look at the joystick, you'll see there's a little screw in there. So that's what's different about it. And with that screw, you can take this key here and twist this. You have three options. You've got all the way, all the way out, excuse me. So you've got all the way out, which is the loosest setting you can possibly have. I'll put a stick on there so you can t tell. Um, this is the loosest setting. It's really loose. It's, it's the most floppy. Um, pretty I don't really I think it's the same as this honestly so this is the same as this on the lowest tension setting then you can take it up one more and you click it that's once and actually the second setting is supposed to mimic the Xbox 360 tension so you technically can take the Xbox 360 style grips for the thumbsticks and put both these, I'm not sure if that's setting this is on. Put it in the middle there. Now, this should be set up just like a 360 controller. So if you really like that 360 level tension, you can do that by changing the tension of the joysticks. And then you can even go a step further and make this even tighter. One more click, that's all the way tightened. And now it's pretty significantly tighter. Um, I probably will play with this on the second setting and this one on the tightest setting for first person shooter games because for recoil management, uh, with this all the way tight here, you can just barely pull down on that stick and not have it flop all the way down. You can put a pretty good amount of tension on that. And when you're shooting, you can use your recoil management and it, it's kind of like when you want to pull down on a mouse when, for playing for PC, you just want to barely pull that recoil down to line up your target. This allows you to do that a little bit easier, having that tighter tension, just personal preference for me. So I do like having that tightest option. And it's cool that you can change these individually and have maybe a loose one over here and a tight one here, or however you like to set it up. I do like that. It's a good feature to have. We'll stick these joysticks back in here, switch these back out, and we'll get into the rest of the controller. This all stores nice and neat in here. I do kind of wish they would have gave you the shorty medium domes and then the 
two tall sticks that I think they really could have fitted in there if they wanted to. I think they could have fit this in here like this. Like maybe up in there and down there or something. They could have they could have fit that in there like that. I mean why that could that could definitely be fit in there, but it's just what they decided to do. Um, crap, now I've got these switched up and I don't know which one's which. The only way to find out is to that fits on there. So that means this has got to be that. So this is a series one and series two. You can see that it's deeper. There's a little a little piece sticking out there. I wonder if I pried that out of there if they both fit on the Series 2. You can definitely tell they're different joysticks. So that's the difference. So now I'll show you guys the paddles for the Series 1 and the Series 2 and give you my thoughts on the back side of the controller. So again the Series 1 has a removable battery. Um, this is, does not come with it. I have this separately. Removable back plate so you need to have this guy to charge it, which is kind of bulky and, and you have to pay for this separately if you want to recharge a battery. So that's that. Um, the back of the Elite Controller Series 1 has these green locks here. You get two options. You get all the way loose, which is a full press of the triggers. You get one click and then it's half a press to activate the triggers. And then the paddles on the Series 1 are pretty big and I don't really like having four paddles on here. I can get used to playing with it, but what happens is if say I want to grab the controller, it's in the way. This I grab it with these two fingers here. This one doesn't even really make contact, but this is right directly in the way of me holding the controller. So you end up having to hold it with this weird palm style grip and then push these and they kind of get in the way. So for the Series 1 controller, my preferred setup is actually to take these controller pieces here and flip them upside down and I actually game like this so these become the bottom paddles and now I can get my two finger grip and have the bet the paddles right there and push that so on the series one controller I started off using all four paddles and I really got tired of pushing these accidentally when I'm doing something and messing up my gameplay so I ended up only using the bottom paddles on the series one which kind of sucks because uh, you got four paddles and I didn't end up using them so on the Series 2, though, you'll notice the paddles are much smaller. Let me put these all back on here so you can see a direct comparison with all paddles attached, just what I mean. All right, so there's the Series 1 controller. Here's the Series 2. Look at that. Much smaller paddles. I mean, that's just... Oh, okay. Somebody's honking outside. Thanks for doing that. Uh, all right, there you go. Look at that difference right there. A little bit darker texture. Same, they're both metal, um, but just look at the difference. I mean, that's much smaller and more compact against the controller. You can interchange these, though. These do switch. If for some reason you wanted to put the Series 1 paddles on the Series 2, you can do it. In fact, I think my preferred method is to take these paddles from the Series 1 and stick them down here like that. I think that's the best way to do it. Now I've got a full grip and I've got, I like that, but I mean, obviously you're not gonna have this option if you don't have both controllers. So let's get back to just what you come, what you get out of the box with the Series 2. Series 2, even with all the paddles attached on the Series 2, I can get two fingers on the controller and hit the paddles. See, I mean, look at that. It's much better. I get all this room here. They're shorter. So I'm just going to have one on, but see how that's in the way of this grip? It's right in the way. And I, they just give you much more room here. So I can hit that if I want, or I can right there. That's how I would hold the controller. So the, having the smaller paddles, they're still just as easy to press, but they're out of the way. They're a little bit shorter. And then on the Series 2, you get three levels of trigger lock here. So here's a full, oh, excuse me. That's a full press. Then you've got the middle level. It kind of wants to jump all the way to one side. That's the middle level, which is half a press. Same as the Series 1, from what I can tell. And then you get this really short throw right here, which is pretty nice. Uh, it's almost an instant press, whereas there's the middle. 
half press, and then you got all the way unlocked, which is a full press. So the bumpers feel pretty much the same. The triggers do have a little grip right here, but the bumpers are pretty much the same. There's no difference in the bumpers. Um, apparently the build quality is a little different though. I know people with the Series 1 had bumper issues. I, I, never, I never broke a bumper on the Series 1 controller, but I know one big complaint was people's bumpers were just literally falling off on the Series 1 controller. So Microsoft claims they've improved the build quality with this. Um, we'll see in a couple months how that holds up. But overall, the Series 2 controller, I do like it a lot. There's several key differences. Uh, one being the wraparound grip's different. The three options for choosing a profile is different. The joystick selection is different. The paddles are smaller and more comfortable in the Series 2. Uh, the color scheme is different. This is now the same matte texture. There's no more cutout here. The button is grayed out. It blends in with the controller. I think it fits nicely. Whereas this one's kind of a weird chrome button. It doesn't really match. If this button was the same texture as that, that'd be cool, but it's just a random chrome button. This actually matches the texture of this pretty well. So the Series 1 does not have an internal battery, which that could be a positive or a negative. I know a lot of people like their AA battery selection. Um, you can get AA rechargeable Energizer batteries or whatever brand you want and have AA rechargeables in here and then literally swap out batteries as soon as you need to. Whereas with this setup right here, if this dies, I'm now stuck putting it on the charger. Um, with this setup right here, if this battery pack dies, I cannot charge through here. I can plug this in and have it run directly off the cord, but plugging this in will not charge this battery pack because it just doesn't work like that. So on the Series 2 controller though, if my battery dies, I can plug it in with the additional included USB-C charger here. And this will literally charge my controller while I'm playing, which is great. Because if say I want to plug it in, charge it for 30 minutes, then unplug it, I'm good to go. Uh, the difference here is this is like micro USB here, which I hate micro USB. It's just my least favorite cable uh, end. USB-C is great. I do like USB-C. So that's great that you can have that like that. I heard that some YouTube reviewers were claiming that this is an external battery pack for your controller. So what people thought was that you can charge this up, I guess they think you can just plug this in and let it get juiced up and then leave it sitting out on your desk and just walk up and throw this on there and have it charging, but that's not the case. See, that's not, it's not charging my, my controller. You can tell it's not charging because there's no light. However, if I plug it in, then it will charge. That's how you know it's not a battery pack. So that's, it's lit up and charging. So that's one false accusation. Some people were thinking this was some external battery pack. Maybe because it sticks to the controller, people thought it was a battery pack. Even if it was a battery pack, you can't game with it on there. It's right in the way. But it would be cool if this was like an extra 2,000 milliamp hour battery pack and you could just have this on the desk and, and do that. That'd be cool. But as you can see, it is not a battery pack. For it to work, you need to either have it in here, plugged in through the case, or plugged in sitting on the desk, or you can charge the controller like itself, like I said. So that's my overview of the Series 2 Elite Controller and the Series 1 Elite Controller and the main differences I have discovered. Literally, I got this probably three or four hours ago and gamed with it for a couple of hours and then decided to make this video on my iPhone, just a quick video. I don't really make YouTube videos or anything, but I figured I haven't seen anybody compare this. So if you have this controller and you're trying to decide, is it really worth upgrading to this controller? For me, it's a pretty significant difference. If you have none of these controllers and you're wondering which one you should buy, I definitely think the Series 2 is the way to go because you get that included battery pack. It's more comfortable with the paddles and you get the three profile selections versus the two on the Series 1. So again, if you got the Series 1 and you want to upgrade to the Series 2, I do think it's a worthy upgrade. And if you have neither of them, this one's a little bit more expensive, but it has the rechargeable battery pack. For the price of the Series 1 Plus, the rechargeable battery pack stand from Microsoft, it's basically the same cost as the Series 2. So throw in that stand rechargeable battery thing in here is why they increased the price.
So that's just my quick overview of the Series 1 and Series 2. Thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with me on the crappy audio and the, you know, just cell phone footage. Um, I just did a quick overview so you guys probably going to put it on Reddit or YouTube just so I can show people if they ask me what the difference is. I can just show them this quick video real quick. So thanks for watching and have a great day.